Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. As mentioned in the previous video, I have brought another video explaining how the i2c LCD library was written. This video is for all of you, whoever wants to understand the library, irrespective of what MCU you are using. This is the i2c LCD library source file, that we are going to discuss today. Before we jump into it, let's see the connection one more time. This is how the PCF8574 is connected with the LCD, and as you can see it only requires two wires to be connected to the MCU. Here I am showing the connection with the SDM32, but it remains the same for whatever MCU you are using. All you need to do is connect the clock pin to the I2C clock, and the data pin to the I2C data. The VCC must be 5 volts, and ground to ground. This is how the actual PCF8574 looks like, and as you can see, this end must be connected to the LCD VSS, and the other end to the LED minus pin. By the way, you can control the LCD contrast using this potentiometer here. This picture actually represents how the PCF is connected internally. This is very important to understand, as our library will be written based on this connection diagram. As you can see, only the four pins, P4 to P7 are connected to the LCD data pins. The pins P0, P1 and P2 are connected to the RS, RW, and enable pins respectively. Although it's not shown here, this pin P3 is actually connected to the LCD backlight. Now that we have seen the connection, let's check out the LCD1602 datasheet also. There are a lot of data sheets available, but things mostly remain the same across them. First of all we will check the initialization part. As shown here, this is the pattern to initialize the LCD in 4-bit mode. We have seen in the connection diagram that only 4 pins from the PCF are actually connected to the data pins, and therefore we need to use the 4-bit mode for the LCD. As mentioned, First we need to wait for more than 15 milliseconds and then we need to send this. Notice here that the RS bit represents whether we are sending a command, or the data. In order to send the command, this bit must be 0, and to send the data, it must be 1. Also the RW bit indicates whether we are reading from the LCD, or writing on it. In order to write something, we must keep this bit 0. So here it means we are writing a command to the LCD. Basically the entire initialization sequence will be a set of commands, and that's why the RS and RW bits will always be zero. Now we are only provided with the bits D4 to D7, so we will keep the lower four bits as zeros. This will make the command as zero cross three zero. Then we need to wait for at least 4.1 milliseconds, and send the same command again. Then wait for 100 microseconds, and send the same command again. Here you can see in the library, I have performed the mentioned operations in a similar way. Now we will send another command, that is 0 cross 2 0, and it will set the interface to 4 bit length. We are using the function lcd send command to send these commands to the display. Let's take a look at this function first. As the name suggests, the function can be used to send the commands to the lcd. It takes the 8 bit command as the argument. But since we are using the LCD in 4-bit mode, we have to send this 8-bit command into two parts of 4-bit each. So our first step would be to separate the upper half and lower half of this 8-bit command. We will perform the end operation with the 0 cross F0, and store this most significant half in the data U variable. Similarly, we will shift the command by 4 bits to the left position, and then perform the end operation with the 0 cross F0, 
and store this least significant half in the data L variable. Now we need to add some other information to this command, which will include the RS bit, the RW bit, and the backlight pin data. We will start preparing the final commands, and we will start by sending the most significant half first. Also remember that in order to send a command, or data to the display, we need to provide something called the strobe. So after we send the data, or the command, we pull the enable pin high, then pull it low. This strobe is a kind of signal to the LCD that we have set the respective data, and now it can process it. Here in this library, I am sending the strobe along with the command itself. So basically I am going to send the same command twice, once with the enable pin high, and the again with the enable pin low. This means our P0 will be low to indicate that this is a command, the P1 will be low to indicate that we are performing a write operation, and P2 will be high to indicate that the enable bit is high, and P3 will be high so that the backlight remains on. This will make the command as 0 cross 0 C, and we will add it with our original command, and store it in the first position. We will send the same command again, but this time the enable pin will be low. So the first two bytes we write to the LCD will have the command, along with the strobe. Similarly we will store the least significant half in the other two bytes of the array. Finally we are ready to send this array of four bytes to the LCD. Now we can use the respective I2C function, according to what controller you are using, and send these four bytes to the LCD. So basically we need the four bytes to send a single byte command. Similarly, to send the data to the display, we use this function, LCD send data. It also takes the data byte as the argument, and then we edit that data before sending four bytes. The only change we need to make is, use the RS bit as one, to indicate that we are sending data this time. Other than that everything is similar to what we did while sending the command. So now that we know how to send data and commands to the display, let's continue with our initialization function. We have reached up to this part, where we set the display into the 4-bit mode. The next few commands will be based on what kind of setup you want with the display. Notice here that now we have all the 8 bytes for each command, and they all will be used in one way or another. Here we have the function set command, and to understand it, we need to see the instruction set in detail. Here the function set command, and it sets the display mode, the number of rows, and the font size. DL controls the display mode, 1 means 8-bit mode, and 0 means 4-bit mode. N controls the number of rows, 1 means 2 rows, and 0 means only 1 row. And the F controls the font size you want to use. I have already commented out everything I used in the library, and you are free to modify these parameters according to your convenience. The next command is the display switch command. Though it's not mentioned here, you can check it by the position of the one in the command. This command controls the display and the cursor. We have to first turn off the display, as mentioned in the initialization sequence. The next command is to clear the display. Here it is mentioned in the first position. Note that all these commands take some time to execute, and therefore we must provide a small delay after each command. The next command is to set the entry mode. Here we can control the movement of the cursor, along with the shift in the display. I have set the cursor to increment, and the display has no shift. If you turn on the display shift, you can control the shift direction by using this command later in the code. Finally, we will turn on the display by using the same command again. You can control the cursor and its blinking also. The PDF I am using doesn't seem to be much detailed, 
so I would advise that you check a few other datasheets also. This entire sequence will initialize our LCD. Now we can use the LCD data send function to send one byte of data to the display. Remember that you can only send data in the ASCII format, so you can send a single character using this function. For example, LCD send data, A, or P, or 3. We have another function here, which can send the entire string to the display. It will simply call the send data function as long as all the characters from the string are printed. Now let's talk about the LCD put cursor function. This function sets the cursor at a specific location on the display. So the LCD have DDRAM addresses, and only certain addresses are available to print these characters. I have covered this in the tutorial I wrote for the ESP32. Here are the DDRAM addresses available for the LCD1602. The top row address starts from 0 cross 80, and we can display 16 characters in this. The bottom row starts from 0 cross C0, and we can display another 16 characters in it. So this function takes the row and column as the parameter. And let's say if we want to print at the 0th row and 5th column. Since the 0th row starts from 0 cross 80, it will add the column to this value. We will get the address 0 cross 85, and we will send this as a command to the LCD, indicating that we want to print at this address. Now if you send some data, it will display at this particular location. Similarly if you give the input as first row and ninth column, it will add the column, that is 9, to 0 cross C0. This will result in the address, 0 cross C9. And then we can print at this particular location by sending the data next time. These are all the functions available in the library, and I hope you understood how I wrote them. Now let's also talk about the slave address of the PCF8574 device we are using. You can see the address is defined here, and I will explain why I am using this address. Let's check out the datasheet of the PCF8574. Here are the addresses defined for PCF8574, or PCF8574A. I have the PCF8574, so I will explain its address. The foremost significant bits are 0100, and then the next three bits are A0, A1, and A2. These three bits are responsible for controlling the address of the device. Here are the pins A0, A1 and A2, and the pins next to them are ground. Right now the pins are high, and if we solder them to ground, the respective pins goes low. The next bit we need to consider is the least significant bit, which is the RW bit. It is used along with the address to indicate whether we are performing the read or write to the device. So by default the address is 0 cross 4E, if we consider the read write bit, and 0 cross 27, if the read write bit is not taken into account. Depending on whether your MCU supports 7 bit address or 8 bit address, you can define it accordingly. So this is it for the video. I hope you understood how the library was written. The usage of the library has already been explained in the previous videos. Anyway I will leave the links to those videos in the description below. Leave comments in case of any doubt. That's it for today. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.